Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. If you are not a man, you cannot have dominion on earth. Satan cannot have dominion on earth because he's not a man. I've taught you here, remember, let them have dominion. Make reference to it. That the condition for being a man is, number one, you must be a spirit. If you are not a spirit, you cannot be a man. Number two, that spirit must be hosted in a material body. And that body must be created from the elements that are consistent with this ecosystem. So there are other spirits with other spirit bodies from other dimensions. They cannot be called men because their bodies were not sourced from the earth. Are we together now? That is why Satan and every other spirit has to depend on man. For as long as there is one man on earth who is under the influence of this software, Aeon, the thinking pattern of this age, it now strengthens Satan and he can look like he has dominion over man. But you need to understand this. God gave the earth to man. The heaven of heavens belong to the Lord and the earth has he given to the sons of men. John chapter 5, please. God is speaking to us. John chapter 5, we begin our reading from verse 1. Pay attention to this story. And this... After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Follow closely now, verse 2. Give us verse 2, please. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep, by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches, three. It says, in this lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the movement of the water. Notice what they are waiting for. The Bible says, For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatever disease he had. Isn't it amazing that this was not a parable? It actually happened on earth. A certain man was there which had an infirmity for how long? 38 years. What was this man's problem? Verse 6. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? He's asking him a question. Watch the man's reply. The impotent man answered and said to him, Sir, I have no man. He never said I have no energy. My limitation is I have potential to be healed, but I'm not connected to any man that can provide the leverage. Sir, in these 38 years, I take responsibility. I am knowledgeable enough to know that I have no man. When the water is troubled to put me into the pool, he said, but while I am coming, another step it down before me. It is logical to assume that that another had a man to help him. Because based on this scripture, men could help men enter the water. If men could not help men, he would not say, I have no man to help me. Somebody who had a man to help him gave him the leverage and the acceleration to enter the pool first. I have no man. This is the story of many people. Please look up. Why have you not risen till now? Why has your life not changed till now? And the correct answer for many people is I have no man. There is nobody, I, am not con I have not placed value on strategic relationships enough to provide a leverage for my home, my company, my ministry, my business. Jesus did not look at him and say you are a liar and you are speaking nonsense. He knew that the man was right. Verse 8, Jesus now looks at him and says, you got it right. You have no man. 
but now here is a man rise up since you were attentive enough to understand the value of men I have come as a man rise up take up your bed and walk hmm. I have no man why has Abuja not opened up for you for decades in spite of being born and bred here I have gifts I have degrees but I have no man let me tell you this ladies and gentlemen may I remind you again that all blessings come from God but they come through men to men please everybody shout it say from God, from God. through men to men. to men one more time say from God, from God. through men, through men. To, men. to men you can complete this sentence with anything from God through men to men that means if God says yes and a man to partner with him says no yes will remain in the realm of the spirit it will not manifest here when God says yes the spirit the bride must also say yes for years to manifest the spirit and the bride say come not the spirit alone not the bride alone please look up there are many of us right now who are stranded in life and destiny and the honest explanation is captured in the story of the man at Bethesda I have no man if there was a man a relationship that could provide a leverage even though you were knocking by 12 midnight, a friend will come out and give you bread. Are we connecting to the story now? I have no man. I have no friend. I have no helper. Why is ministry stunted like this? That easy things look difficult. I have no man who can mentor me and open me up and show me the dynamics of excelling with integrity. Why are you so financially incapacitated because of 10,000? Someone in your family is about to lose his life. I have no man that has invested their interest in my family enough to erode this unnecessary pain. Why are you running around? What, how much is the rent? 500,000, 200,000. Why have you not paid it then? I mean, I don't have a job. That is not the right answer. I have no man there is always a man who is behind the results that men produce by God listen carefully the nation of Israel had God for 430 years they were still slaves God was there but they were still slaves you thought that because God was there they would magically go out 430 years with God and yet the man who will walk in partnership with God had not showed up and they remained slaves even though there was prophecy to Abraham that their time lapse was 400 years exactly 30 years was added because of the delay in training the man who would come until that man showed up Moses stands before Pharaoh and says thus said the Lord God of the Hebrews let my people go God was saying now is the time for their exodus but a man had to stand before Pharaoh it was not God that appeared before Pharaoh but he backed the man that he sent please look at me let me tell you the truth your life can be put in indefinite pain regret perpetual circles of defeat and lack of fulfillment simply because you have no man no wonder the Bible says in the multitude of men is a king's honor not in the vastness of the palace not in the dexterity of the treasury when you read the book of Esther the Bible tells us that King Ahasuerus was a great king he was king over 127 provinces watch this the kingdom was about to split into two because one man in this case a woman Vashti was going to misbehave in the kingdom there was no war the treasuries were not looted there was no disobedience from the military men but one woman was about to cause trouble in that kingdom men are powerful 
more powerful than what you know most of us will choose many other things and leave men please look up do you know that everything you call business or commerce today only finds its value because there is a man take all the men on earth out of the earth leave all the banks open including the ATM that does not have money leave it with the ATM card open up CBN and the vaults open everything there will it profit you are we together now yes do you know why Cain cried and said my cause is too great something was put upon his life that will make no man to come near him again that was a punishment it was not that the beast of the earth will eat him something was put upon him and he said every man that sees me will kill me and God said no I will put a mark upon you in all of your punishment I will still give you the benefit of relationship and the Bible says Cain built a city and named it after his son he could have the benefit of relationship and there was a future for him in spite of his rebellion and the curse of God upon him can I tell you all hope is never lost for a man who has a man let me say it again. All hope is never lost for a man who has a man by his side in addition to the God of heaven. Knowing that men are this important, why is it that men ignore men while God does not ignore men? It is because of arrogance and largely ignorance these are the two major reasons why men have not maximized relationships please ladies and gentlemen pay attention every aspect of this ministry today by the grace of God it is credited to the mercy and the grace of God but through men to men the job that you now have if you are to be honest it came from God but through men to men when you open the door of your company your corporation your superior is not an angel or a spirit sitting down there is a human being who has the power to fight you when you pray for favor you pray with respect to that man sitting there is that true God favor me what is in this man that he cannot increase my pay and God will do something to him and the man will call you you call it answered prayer because the answer was in the hand of a man this leads me to the next, the next discussion. You have heard me say it and I will repeat it again. In this kingdom, who hates you does not matter. But ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. Knowing that this world is men dependent, who loves you matters. When you say you need God alone with respect to his sovereignty and power, like we discussed and worshiped earlier on, you are right. But when you say you need God alone with respect to the overall dynamics of the cosmos, you will spend your lifetime learning a bitter and a painful lesson. Are we together? Jesus is on his way to Golgotha as the word incarnate, bleeding literally from all the lacerations and the beatings and the wickedness that came from all these people. He's on his way and he's weak. Jesus falls on the way and if there was no man for Jesus, he would have died there. I hope you know if Jesus died on the ground, he could not be a curse because it is written, cost is every man that hangs on a tree, not dies on the ground. But there was one man, Simon of Cyrene, who came and lifted the cross for him. You thought Jesus would say, no, this is redemption. None of your business. You are the sinner I came to save. He would have died there. He allowed the man to help him while he regained the energy that was left for him to die. Jesus needed men. When he resurrected, after the coronation service in heaven, guess what he did? He did not go to another planet to rejoice. He came back straight to the earth and gathered the men. 120 of them and said even though i'm the glorified christ i still need you come together after 40 to 50 days 10 days now the holy ghost is going to be coming i need to teach you certain things and he taught them when the holy ghost came he came upon men the gospel of jesus christ today continues to advance from nation to nation not just by the will of god alone but through men if you ignore men in your life, 
Ladies and gentlemen, you will pay a very serious price. Write this down, please. Write this down. You must understand the principles of sustainable relationships. You must understand the principles of sustainable relationships. You must understand the principles of sustainable relationships in order to excel in your life and destiny. You must understand the principles of sustainable relationships. A few things about relationships. I've done several teachings, but then I'll still do them because I'm sharing a few things. Let's see how far we can go because I need you to get the third dimension. We have to get it before we close tonight. Let me share a few things with you about relationships that are very, very, very important. Are you ready? Praise God. The first, you already have it down. That who hates you does not matter in this kingdom, but who likes you matters. Write this down. Men. Men are ladders. And men can provide a leverage to your life. Men are ladders. And men can provide a leverage to your life and destiny. That means there are systems of advantage. The ministry of men. Men are ladders, like you climb a ladder and move from one face and one dimension to the other, and that men can provide a leverage to your life and your destiny. God will always use men for your rising. Satan will always use men for your falling. God will always use men for your rising. Satan will always use men for your falling or for your destruction. Please do not forget this. God will always use men for your rising. The devil will always use men for your destruction. Write this down. Relationships are investments. Underline the word investments. is one of the key points I want you to get as far as dealing with men is concerned. Relationships are investments. They are not like investments. They are investments. So the next time you are listing all the investments you have, make sure you do not leave relationships outside. How many investments do you have? I have real estate. I have shares with this company. That is all. You made a big mistake. You are in trouble. If I'm the one interviewing you, I will just advise you. I will say you are in trouble. After this interview, run quickly and go and start making the most superior investment. Man. Are we together? If you tell somebody that men are an investment and he laughs at you, feel sorry for him. Not there so that you don't lose your job, but in your mind. Are we together? Men are always a leverage that God will use. My life is full of stories at several points where God brought men, strategic relationships that have made for my personal advancement and the advancement of this vision. And every great person here without exception can tell you that their lives changed because of the presence of a man. There are many people who are in pain here and across the globe. They can trace their pain to the presence of men. They didn't have that pain except and unless men came into their lives. So you need to be very, very careful, ladies and gentlemen, knowing that your victory and your defeat is not only God dependent, but it is men dependent. You have to obtain the intelligence to know how to piece to your life the right team, the right sets of men. He that walks with the wise, the Bible says, that he shall be wise himself, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. There are many people who were well behaved, people of character, and they loved God until they were introduced to certain men and their lives just went bad. There were people who were bad, demonic, devilish, irresponsible, but they were introduced to certain men and certain circles. You may want to write this. 
No man will ever outgrow the influence that comes from men. No man will ever outgrow the influence that comes from men. You can never be so matured or too matured that men will stop influencing you. It's not true. You are only given the liberty to choose who influences you. But to say you will not be influenced. No man has immunity against the influence that comes from men. You only have the liberty to choose who influences you. At every given point in your life, there is somebody who is influencing you and there is somebody you are influencing. Hallelujah. Let me, as a way of just passing through it, list for you four or five keys. I've given it to you before, but for the sake of this teaching, keys to help you maintain relationships. We're not really talking about relationships with men extensively. I've done that teaching already. You can get it. And then there are other series on relationships coming in the future. But then let me just quickly put this down. You will need it, ladies and gentlemen. What I'm about to share with you will explain the reason why some of us are painfully lonely. We are alone even though we love God. Look at me, please. If you are alone and you say everybody hates me, it's an attack on your mind. Everybody cannot hate you like that. It is a sign that there is a negative energy. There is a pungency that comes out of you. And let me tell you the truth. People love you. But like Luke 11, they love themselves too. The man said, I love you, but now your friendship is about to become an interruption to my children. So stay outside. Let me protect my children. People love you, but not when your relationship now becomes an interruption to their lives. Please pay attention. There are some of us who never find friends anywhere. There are some of us who find friends, but the lifespan of any friendship it's not more than one month. At the end of one month, something must happen. Go, I don't care. I've, I've, I've always been by myself. That's why you see that everything continues to backfire. In the name of Jesus, as I share this, let it come as light and deliverance for you. Amen. Shout amen, please. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Great potentials, great people, there are some of us, there is, if you are in trouble today, God forbid, there is nobody you can call that even if it's by midnight, what happened? I'm in trouble. And the person says, not under my watch. You are too valuable. Let me tell you this. If there is nobody in your life who loves you and believes in you enough to be there for you at moments of pain, your life is hanging on a very delicate balance. Before I begin to give you this list, I want you to think for one moment, and for those who are following online, please participate. Let me work with your mind now. Mention in your mind, leave the little baby, just guide her around. She's in the house of God. She will have people who will protect her, and then there are many other people who unfortunately, unfortunately, will lose opportunities and will never have you try to touch this little baby for instance in this example and you find out that there are people who will come to help her she cannot talk but she's in the right environment he that works with the wise will be wise but a companion of fools will be destroyed are we together now is there anyone in your life right now look at me everybody is there anyone in your life right now Honestly speaking, that you can call and ask for help, whether financial help, spiritual help, and you are sure that if the person has the means, the person will respond. Don't lift your hand. Think about it. If your answer is no, please listen twice because your life is in danger right now. Man of God, is there anybody you can call under God, not by manipulation, and sincerely share your vision with them? And the person will say, look, I'm in a position to provide support of all sorts. There are many people who have 
almost the cause of Cain upon their lives. They move like fugitives in life. Nobody is interested in your life to invest their credibility, their reputation, their resources. Can I tell you, if everybody hates you, the problem is you. It cannot be, everybody cannot be stupid, demonic, oh, it's because I love God. My way is different, you are lying. No. It, that would be an insult on the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Human beings have mastered the art of avoiding trouble and they can discern trouble from afar. And when your life becomes a capture of a plethora of troubles, help the lady now, please, you can carry her. I only commended her, I didn't say, just carry her gently. If you leave this girl, she will climb up the stage and come and meet me. Koinonia children for you. Hallelujah. Are we together? Let me share with you a few keys. Number one, if you want to maintain destiny relationships, there are a few keys that you must learn. Number one, you must rise above what we call competitive jealousy. You will never be able to maintain strategic destiny relationships when you know that you are prone to jealousy. And this is not just an issue of spiritualizing it alone. There is a psychology to this. I have taught you again and I will repeat it. It is not unusual to have this struggle around jealousy when you are in an atmosphere where you see results and then you are alienated from it. But I advise you, you can never maintain strategic relationships until you rise above competitive jealousy. There are people who can never be in any circle except they are the leaders there. If they are not going to lead and call the shots there, they cannot go and sit quietly. It is a dangerous mentality. We got some of this mentality from culture. We got some of this mentality from our past demonic attacks. This is why when we come to the house of God, we allow the washing of the water and by the word. Are we together now? Avoid competitive jealousy. Let me just give you one scripture on this. Proverbs 14, 30. Let's hurry up. Proverbs 14, 30. The Bible says, A sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy the rottenness of the bones. Envy is a terrible thing. Jealousy. So are you the only one who is dressing like this? Why is it that everybody comes, they are greeting so-so-so person and leaving me? That's always how they are. I've faced this since I was born. It should be a reason to go for a retreat and say, Lord, the same Lord is rich unto all. If they have done this to this person, I take responsibility. It means there is something I do not understand. My brother or my sister, what is the secret behind the favor of God in your life that I'm not seeing in my life? And five minutes of spiritual lecture can deliver you from years of ignorance. For someone, this is a prophetic word God is giving you. Making careless assumptions and walking in competitive jealousy will always put you in trouble. You see this sadly with preachers. You see this with business people. You see this in the house of God. It shouldn't be. In the sky, there are no traffic. There's room for everybody. Are we together now? Number two, let's hurry up. The second key to maintaining relationships avoid evil speaking slash backbiting you must avoid it i'm teaching you this to empower you you cannot maintain relationships living in an atmosphere that is perpetually about evil speaking and backbiting nobody will accommodate you under that pungent atmosphere for some of you this is why nobody wants to come around your life there is nothing else to say except to gossip there is nothing else to say except to backbite you see i think it was dr miles munro who said losers talk about people are we together mediocres talk about things but great people talk about ideas Never allow yourself to be the habitation of gossip and jealousy. People come around and say, hey, there is a gist. Oh. You mean you've been in this Abuja in Nigeria and you've not heard? Do not allow your atmosphere to be the one that accommodates that pungent spirit. Say amen. amen. You must avoid evil speaking. Avoid backbiting. Some of you will talk about everybody and when there is nobody, you will talk about yourself. Because you just have to say something. 
be delivered from it in the name of Jesus. I'm not being sarcastic. I'm helping you. Listen. Life will be so easy when you know how to attract and keep strategic relationships. I told you relationships are investments. This is how to make the investment. When your atmosphere becomes conducive, you will be surprised at the kinds of people who will gravitate to your life. And with them will come every blessing that they carry in their hands. When the Magi came to Jesus, they all came together with what they were carrying. When a wise man comes, he comes with the benefits of his wisdom to your life. Are we learning now? So avoid evil speaking, avoid backbiting. Number three, very quickly, practice forgiveness and tolerance. Practice forgiveness and tolerance. It will be impossible for you to maintain relationships all through your lifetime if you cannot practice forgiveness and tolerance i've taught you here in koinonia the difference between forgiveness and tolerance let me say it that forgiveness has to do with providing pardon to over a default tolerance means accommodating the intrinsic weaknesses of people because it will happen again and again and again for instance if a talkative tells you sorry i will not talk again you don't have to forgive the person you are wasting your time what you need is what tolerance say amen, amen. practice forgiveness there are some of us you you are you are angry with everybody including god you don't forgive anybody at all someone knocks your door four times instead of three times and that becomes an offense that you carry for 10 years. Where do you know this guy? 1991, he knocked my door four times instead of three times. No. You have to deliver yourself. Listen, listen, while you are laughing, I hope you are paying attention. You must be, when you carry the luggages of hate and bitterness, you are affecting your own life too. Are we together now? Yes. Carrying offense and, and unforgiveness is like swallowing poison and expecting another person to die. If you don't practice tolerance, you will hurt yourself many times because even the best of people who will come to your life will have their limitations. It is, it is, it is a reality with all men. Are we together now? Looking for perfection is a waste of time. You will never find it. Have you seen someone try to kill a mosquito that is around your face? You may miss the mosquito, but one thing you will never miss is the slap on your face. And then the mosquito comes again. Look for an effective way to kill it. You keep at the end of it, 10 slaps, and yet the mosquito is not dead. That's what many people are doing to their souls. Set yourself free tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. My brother did this, my mother did this, one cousin did this. Set yourself free and it is, it, listen, it's a revelation of a superior way of living. A superior way of living. Are we together now? You want to maintain relationships, you must practice forgiveness and tolerance. Let me give you, can I give you two more? What number are we now? Number four, be an active contributor to the growth of the relationship seeing that your relationship is a, a, any kind of relationship i spoke about valentine and some of you think i'm against it i'm not against it oh. go on with your plan as planned provided you, you are doing what you are doing in wisdom minus god minus wisdom don't do it are we together now be an active contributor to the growth of the relationship please look at me relationships do not build themselves they are built by the parties involved are we together now yes you this is true for married couples this is true for business relationships this is true for parents and children anybody who does not become an active contributor there there's there's what they call parasitic relationships where there are people who don't bring anything at all are we together relationships must be a healthy balance between expectations 
and contributions. When your expectation in a relationship far outweighs your contribution, you are a selfish person. When your contribution far outweighs your expectation, somebody is being unfair on you. There must be a healthy balance. Are we together? You cannot contribute 1,000 Naira worth of contribution and expect 1 million Naira worth of expectation. That is fraud. Are we together now? It's like giving the bank 1,000 Naira and expecting 10 million tomorrow. It doesn't work that way. Unfortunately, there are people, that's how their relationships are. You never can trace the benefit that they bring into the system. If there are workers in church, they will never pay anybody's transport, even as a seed. They don't have anybody's birthday in mind, including their family members. They forget everything. No. The only thing they remember is their needs. Who has something to say? Me. Well, I just want you to know that things are not really all right for me right now. And um, I will appreciate whatever it is that anybody can do because I know that God uses men. Have you seen people like that? The entire conversation is about them. And I love you with all my heart, everybody, but particularly, let me speak to you, our dear sisters in the Lord. In the name of Jesus, let me give you counsel. I don't talk so much about this, but let me give you an honest counsel. Throw away some of these garbages that come in from misguided, maybe in social media, or what edit the things that you learn. Are we together? The moment you are in any kind of relationship that makes it all about you, you are already in trouble. Not even our relationship with God is all about him. When we tell him, God, take everything, he says, no, I'm not so selfish. I will make sure that I attend to you also. Are we together now? Don't carry that narrative that is all about you. You find this happen all around and people refuse to be active contributors. So we have business partners. One is just there like a parasite. Are you awake now? May God bless you. God will help you for us, eh? In Jesus' name. Hear me. Where you do not have any definite value to offer, let your value be gratitude. Where you do not have anything definite to offer, make sure you keep showering that relationship with a lavish expression of gratitude. You are a man and you are not doing anything and your wife is working, bringing you money all the time and having the unashamedness to look like a fool before you. My husband, I'm submitting to you, including this money. Children's school fees, she's paid it. House rent, she's paid it. And you say, thanks. No, that's not wisdom. Don't be offended. I'm saying this because I love you. Let me tell you, gratitude is a big contribution in any relationship. Gratitude can equalize even what your value cannot bring. I'm not able to do this, but I'm really grateful. I wouldn't have had the money to buy the fuel, but thank you for stepping in. I really want you to know that I am, I am thoughtful and thankful for what you have done. I think there, there is, um, um, I think it's Yoruba people that do it, that they thank twice. They do that one in the night, and then by the next day, they do it again. Very healthy practice. Do it. Do it three times, in fact. In this, in this world, you want, you want people to remember you. I hope someone is learning. Man of God, someone gives you a hundred million naira as a seed in ministry and you have access to know the person. It's not to worship people, but don't say, I don't care. God provides it. No, no, don't speak like that. You will be poor and you will struggle in ministry. It's a very honest advice. Learn to appreciate people sincerely. Your wife treats you well, tell her thank you. Don't say, I paid your dowry already. What is my... No, don't act like that. You're a child of God. Your husband provides and then no matter how wealthy you are, train your children to say thank you. This entitlement mentality that is destroying Africa. They pay their school fees, they do this. Teach them to say thank you. Are we together now? Thank you to God and thank you to men. There are times you can just pick up your phone and begin to thank the people who have contributed greatly or significantly in your life. The corporate organizations understand this. This is why they keep excelling. We in the church are masters of taking people for granted. Pastors, I say this respectfully speaking. 
when God gives you members and workers who love you and labor day and night, seeing that the work is advanced, don't take them for granted. Find every means within your power to say thank you and repeat it again. And for koinonia workers, thank you. Thank you. And I really mean what I'm saying. Thank you. Our global family, thank you. For all of you who are here, thank you. If you are not here, whether I am anointed or not, that's not the issue. It's one thing to be valuable, but it's another thing for people to believe in you enough to invest their credibility, their attention, their resources, their loyalty. Do not take them for granted. Is someone learning? If somebody paints this kind of picture for you, will you under normal circumstances run away from that person? No. My husband doesn't love me. If it's an attack, that's all right. There's a miracle service coming. But under normal, <laughs> under, listen, listen, under normal circumstances, find out what is making your husband run away from you. You can't come and yell from morning till night, shouting, calling the man's name, remembering in 1999, it was 12 noon, you were wearing white, I remember, plus a dark shirt, you, and, you, and the man has returned tired. He will go out of the house and go and sleep in the office. I knew you were going to go out. Come back, you will still meet me here. <laughs> and for men, let's tame our arrogance and say thank you and be there. Sometimes all this big manism for nothing. Once you cannot help yourself and people do for you what you cannot do for yourself, be humble enough to acknowledge people. It does not take anything out of you. There are men who would rather say, how are you? I hope you are fine. Your dress is nice than to say thank you. Just say thank you. Men, say it. One more time. Say thank you. Koinonia men, say it. Say thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are we learning? So you must be an active contributor to every relationship. Some of you right now, let me tell you this. After service, practice what you just learned now. Think of people who have significantly contributed to your life, including your boss that you may say you don't like. I just want to appreciate you, sir. I've learned something. I came to church and I was greatly inspired. Transformation is happening and I've decided to respond just to tell you I'm grateful. Let me tell you what to expect. Most of them will not reply. That does not mean the effect was not created. I'm giving you a teaser so you don't frown and say, you see, mm -mm. that's how it works. They will not reply, but the effect has been created. The day promotion will come, that's when you will know that text added up to your rising. There are many people who are grounded today because of ignorance. Become an active contributor. Someone helps you, gives you, say, a loan of one million naira, and you rise, and now you are a big man, and then you are going to his house, and you buy orange of 100 naira. Haba, let's be, be honest. You carry 100 naira orange that you bought just at a junction near his house. The leather is even torn, and you wrap, tie it here, tie it here, and you just say, sorry, oh, no. Politicians understand this. Non-Christians understand this. They are masters of investing into strategic relationship. But church people, because of the presence of the Holy Spirit, and other advantages like favor, these things are investment. Start making your investment now. After service, don't match people and push people and run around. You don't know that the person you just push is the doctor that will treat your child if he has malaria. No. Treat people with honor and with dignity. Are we together now? Don't look at someone saying he came for koinonia, he's looking like he's dressed in a rag. He may be wearing rags, but something is happening to his mind. And tomorrow when you see the same son of man in power and glory, you will bite your finger in regret. Is someone learning? Never be part of any kind of relationship where it is all about giving to you and you are not an active contributor. It doesn't have to be money. Give love and support. If someone decides to invest into your life, your children, I just called to say, um, Honorable, 
just to greet you and to ask how you are doing. I hope everything is fine. My prayers and my blessings are with you in Jesus' name. You have scheduled a season of continuous favor. There are many people, the day you get a text from them is because another request is coming. Calvary greetings. Just to let you know that uh, I am still here. Two minutes later, they just say, sorry, just to let you know, the one million again, the rent, the way you... No, you don't act like that. Don't give people memories of pain when they think about you. If you are learning, shout amen. amen. So my dear brother and my dear sister, this may be one of the reasons why people run away from you. It may also be the reason why no kind of relationship seems to work for you. Because you are always thinking about what people will give to you. Or you have very little value and contribution, but you have unreasonably high expectation. Believing that everybody will come and give you heaven and earth, it doesn't work that way. You must become an active contributor to the growth of that relationship. Your time, your resources, any kind of leverage you can provide under God. Let me give you the last key. Are you learning? Master kindness and hospitality. You want to maintain valuable relationships that translate to open doors, as simple as this sounds, you will be surprised how many people may not be able to make progress. Master kindness. What is kindness? The quality of being friendly, generous, and considerate. That's what we call kindness. The quality of being friendly, generous, and considerate. And then master hospitality. Hospitality is not about cooking food. Hospitality is built upon an intrinsic desire to see people happy and welcomed. Let me repeat it again. The last key, you want to maintain relationships with men, master kindness and hospitality. Please say kindness. kindness. Say hospitality. hospitality. One more time, say kindness. kindness. Say hospitality. Kindness. kindness is the quality of being friendly, the quality of being generous and the quality of being considerate. And then to be hospitable means intrinsically, you desire to people, see people happy, you desire to see people welcomed. I give you a guarantee under God, you cannot surround yourself with this kind of spiritual and psychological energy and have people run away from you. It, it will not happen under normal circumstances. Many of us are not kind. Many of us are not hospitable. Are we together? Master kindness to your wife, to your husband, to your children, to your superiors, to your contemporaries, to your subordinates. Master kindness. Apostle, in our family, we don't really give. That's all right. Learn. You can learn from today, this night. Learn. Are we together? Master kindness. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it as a confession. In the name of Jesus. I declare that kindness begins to walk in my life. Say it again. In the name of Jesus. I declare that kindness begins to walk in my life. To be kind means to be friendly. People should not look at you and say good afternoon and you look at them, you size them from head to toe. Who is your father? Who is your mother? What are you wearing? What kind of designer? No, just go. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Be kind to people. Let me tell you something. I wish I had the time to tell you stories. In my life, some of the, the great helpers in my life have been some of the most unassuming people based on the physical persona if you were to select people you will not go close to those people yet they have profound and tremendous influence and by that that discernment and to be able to communicate honor it provided a leverage that myself and even this ministry is still benefiting from today don't look down on people because of financial status because of educational whatever you may have people that are that match your pedigree to deal with I understand that but make sure that you are kind to everybody 
God has granted you a car. I know you are driving a car of 100 million naira. Don't hit the guy walking on the road just because you are moving. Because one day you will buy a car in his company. Are we together? Yes. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, when you are starting out in life, live your life with honor and dignity. Provided you are walking the path of righteousness and integrity, there should be no shame. Don't fake your life. No. One shirt that you have, wear it with honor. Anybody that wants you to wear a designer cloth before they respect you does not deserve to be your friend. They are leaving you is it was God ordained to give you peace because you already see that that pathway will lead to destruction. It is selfishness personified. Are we together? Practice kindness. I pray even for myself every time that beyond being an anointed man of God, beyond being someone who God has trusted with revelation and leadership, that at, at a nuclear level, that, that character of kindness huh, and hospitality will come from me, not because I'm a preacher. It is a beautiful way to live. Are we together now? Many of you are not kind. You've not done anything to anybody. There are clothes in your house today that are spoiling. You have outgrown them. You will never use them, yet you will not give it. The pain of giving out new clothes, that's what is paining you. You would rather keep it there than to give it to someone. No. Go back home after this meeting. Go and sort the clothes in your wardrobe. Apostle, they are too expensive. Really? For who now? The people Jesus died for? I'm giving you an assignment and for those who are following our global family, decongest your life from a lot of things. Start with your clothes. Go and give somebody. Take 10,000 naira and say, look, that woman that is always sitting at the side, I'm always seeing her children jumping. Every time they see me, they say, good afternoon, mommy. Those children have been calling you for mommy, calling you mommy for one year. You've never done anything that, that justifies being called mommy. Do it after this service. Give them something and say, look, children, how much is their school fees? 10, 10, 10, 10,000. Okay, I can only do two. Take. Even if it's just one time. Giving is living. There can never be kindness. Listen, there can never be kindness without giving. Some of you, Valentine, right now, your spouse or your friend has bought all kinds of gifts and you don't plan to do anything. All you plan to do is amen. Let me pray for you. Let me tell you if you are in this house, nobody should buy you any gift or anything and then you give them prayer back. You are selfish. Are we together? People should not go out of their way to show you love and care and then you throw it away. It shouldn't be. Some of you have never blessed any man of God that God used to bless your life. You are not kind at all. You receive, you grow, you increase. I'm not asking you to give me money. You know that. But I'm saying it is a practice in your heart. Never be part of any ministry, any church, any man of God, any organization where you are consistently being blessed and lifted and you don't take it as a responsibility to contribute. If you cannot give money, give prayers. If you cannot give prayers, sow the seed of gratitude. Some of you may need to do this to your parents. Did you know that there are many wealthy people around who are millionaires and billionaires and sometimes you see their parents and their conditions back home, maybe in the village, and it's pathetic. Let people rejoice, but human beings. <laughs> say, I am a blessing. I'm not wasting your time. Say it. Say, I am a blessing. I am a blessing. So whatever you need to correct tonight, if it's an attitude problem, correct it. You are sarcastic, you hate on people, you misbehave, correct it. Okay, Apostle, we are like that in our family, I understand. We don't judge you, but this is where the power of the word comes. Let me tell you, if you do not rise above culture, you may never prevail in certain dimensions. You have to exalt the word of God beyond some of these cultural things. Love the word of God and rise beyond the grip of culture and the limitations that they bring to your mind. 
Are we together now? God cannot trust you with the destinies of men at a global scale when you are limited in understanding and surrounded with all kinds of prejudices and biases. It doesn't work that way. God gave you five children. Three are your biological children and two may not be your biological children. Maybe I may not say, okay, treat everybody the same, but at least let the two be able to feel the love of genuine parents. Don't humiliate them simply because their parents are dead. No. I made up my mind that everybody under my watch by the grace of God will feel the love of a father without prejudice. Is someone learning? At the end of your life, it's not how many things you have acquired that matters. Is who was able to know the Lord because of you who was able to smile and find hope can I tell you my dear sister you cannot become this kind of person and not have one person in your life who loves you enough to be around you my dear brother you cannot become this kind of person I have described and not have one person who believes in you enough willing to invest their lives I ask this question again as we finish up this second phase who in your life today man of God woman of God businessman my dear sister my dear brother who in your life today have you chosen to invest your time your resources your credibility as a sincere way of contributing into relationships the moment you find out that you are a parasite only receiving from people change because very soon you will find out that you are alone no human being survives an atmosphere with that level of pungency people want to know that you are an active contributor husband and wife children to their parents parents to their children men of god to members members to men of god businessmen ceos to your your staff staff to to ceos you know all kinds and all cadres make sure that you become active contributors and your relationship will become magnetic your persona will be so inviting even if people have nothing to tell you they want to be around you because you become the closest expression of jesus christ spare me a few minutes and let me touch on the last dimension are you ready for it so we spoke about your relationship with god Number two, your relationship with men. And I spent a bit of time just stressing on a few things that will help us have effective relationships. Number three, and that will be the final consideration for tonight, your relationship with things. Your relationship with God, number one. Your relationship with men, number two. And then the last dimension of relationship, this is very important, your relationship with things. Let's consider a few scriptures very quickly and then we will pray. First Timothy chapter 6, we we'll begin our reading from verse 17. First Timothy 6, please write and look very carefully. First Timothy 6 and verse 17. Many of you do not know that there is a way to relate with things. You can relate with things wrongly. The same way you relate with God wrongly, you relate with men wrongly, you can relate with things. Things there mean all kinds of material possessions. There is an art, there is a technology to relating with things in a way that it benefits you and does not leave you miserable. Charge them, it says, that are rich in this world. Please look up that they may not be high-minded. Are you seeing the side effect of wealth and riches? Nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. That is already a beautiful scripture. So we are not in confusion as to the fact that God gives us all things to enjoy. Verse 18. That they do good. Is someone learning now? That they use the things that have been given to them to do good and they be rich in good works ready to distribute willing to communicate 19 laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come make reference to my teaching the law of seasons that they may lay hold on 
eternal life. 20. It says, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called. The last verse, 21. It says, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with you. Amen. Now, please look up. He's teaching his son in the gospel, Timothy, how to deal with things. He's saying the moment you begin to have access to things, influence, material riches, there are certain things that begin to happen to you. And if you do not know how a spiritual man relates to material things, it can tear you into pieces that at the end of your life, like Judas, the money that you have will not bless you. You will lose the money, lose your relationship with Jesus, and even lose your life. Are we learning? One more scripture. First John chapter 2, a popular scripture from verse 15 and 16. First John 2, 15 and 16. Love not the world. The word love there is the Greek word eros. Lost. An ungodly affinity love not the world neither the things are you seeing there now the things that are in the world that means he's not saying don't have cars and houses and things that make your life comfortable the word love there means do not develop an ungodly affinity an affinity that you can kill for money you can kill for things it does not matter if any man love the world in that similitude, the love of the Father is not in him. Are we learning? Verse 16. For all that is in the world, the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Please look up. Something begins to happen to men when they start succeeding. I can tell you that. It is easier to become successful than to remain successful. The dynamics of managing things is such that if God does not help you, you will lose your life, your character, your integrity, everything that makes you you intrinsically, you can lose it in the presence of plenty. The misbehavior of the people in Jesus' crusade came after they ate bread. When they were hungry, they behaved themselves. They said, let them sit down. They all sat down. The moment they ate and they were full, they scattered bread all around the crusade ground and left. When they gathered it, it was 12 baskets full. Something happens to men in the midst of plenty. I understand your correct behavior right now because you are probably owing or there's something happening. But when you get to a point where you have plenty, you are not limited by anything. That is when you see the potential that is in the hearts of men. Pride, a haughty spirit and so on and so forth. Please look up. Let me teach you something. The secret to managing things is to never exalt them above Jesus. Number two, understand that every blessing that God gives you is for your comfort, for the revelation of Jesus to help you become a blessing to humanity. Never exalt any material thing above Jesus. Don't have a garage for your car, a safe for your jewelries, and yet not have a place to meet with God. I'm not teaching you to be careless with things. But as God blesses you like he has done for many of us and he's doing for many, the implication of open doors is that among the many blessings that come to you is plenty. For a man of God here, maybe you are at a prophetic point in your ministry right now where God is about to expand you and increase you. With increase comes the burden of management and correct relationship. You can relate wrongly with things by making them God in your life. That was the mistake of the rich fool. He made money his God. There are people, money is their God today. There are people, certificates is their God. There are people, their, their pedigree and whatever it is, is their God. Some of the greatest people I've met in my life are people who are extremely humble, godly, very honoring in the midst of plenty. 
It is my prayer even for myself that as God continues to help me and show me his mercy, that all these things that distract people and produce pride, great man of God, great deeds, that those things will be far from the corridors of my life. Say amen for me. Amen. And I pray the same prayer for you too sincerely. Let me tell you the truth. Many of you here have been blessed by God at different levels. Some of you have been extremely blessed to the glory of God. All together, we owe ourselves a responsibility. You are a man of God. You are a businessman. You are a millionaire. You are a billionaire. You are watching from across the globe, an owner of conglomerates. Thank God for your achievements. We do not downplay it. But let me tell you, there is a healthy way we relate with things. The believer in Christ has rules of engagement. You don't engage with things as though they are your life. My money, that is the language of an unbeliever. My house, my car, my business. I am a millionaire. I am a billionaire. Not just as a confession of the word, but just to rub it into people and you demand all kinds of human worship because of it you are relating wrongly if you are blessed you are blessed you don't have to rub it on the faces of people most of the people who do that are just at their infancy into the wealthy place i can tell you people who are established there you know it by the character of stability they they, they use others more superior parameters to command respect not resources are we together it is my prayer, I'm saying it again, and I'm praying for everybody here sincerely. Some of us may need to tame our pride and our attitude towards things. Your life, your relationship with God changed. Many things went wrong in your life when the blessing began to come. While you were trekking, you were moving, no nothing. You see, one of the ways that you manage things is to remember where he took you from. Always remember. Thou shall remember. Koinonia, we are wrapping up. Do not forget this. Man of God, thou shall remember. I still remember the days of infancy of this ministry. Absolutely nothing. Blind trust in Jesus. And that was it. I remember one of the major financial blessings that came to this ministry that time was 20,000. A lady gave so that we would buy mat instead of sitting on the ground. Do not forget where God took you from. Apostle, I'm a billionaire. You are not the first. You will not be the last. And don't be part of the many lessons that, that, that others are learning from. Negatively. If God has blessed you and he has helped you, enjoy the blessings of God. But let your heart and your mind be on Jesus. That you can push that car you can push all those things, the, the estates and everything. And people look at you and say, ah, man of God, as great as you are, it's as if you don't like good things, Abi. Run away from them. They may be sincere, but they are leading you to the path of, of deception. You're the king of my life. That was why I wrote this song. It was around a Valentine period, just around this period. Period. That was when I wrote this song many years ago. Listen to it. it. Says, King of my life, you are my own, and I live for you alone. You're the king of my life, you have my own, and I lay my life for you. My heart is yours, my mind is yours, my will is yours, you're the king of my life, you're the king of my life. You're the
and houses you're the king of my life beyond ministry businesses you're the king of my life beyond prestige and pedigree listen hear me as the doors begin to open because of this key of relationships make sure you sing this song as you walk through them let the doors hear you make your declaration as you walk through the doors of enviable prosperity, the blessings of the nation given to you in one day, somebody's prayer request of five years being given to you in a moment at the instance of relationship, don't just collect it. As these doors and the blessings come, my final word and let it be my Valentine gift to you, my dear people, is make sure you walk through those doors singing. Don't sing. I will sing it to you, dedicated to you now even though to Jesus. King of my life, you are my own, and I live for you alone. You're the king of my life, you have my own, and I lay my life for you. My heart is yours, my mind is yours, my will is yours, you're the king of my life, you're the love of my life. Walk through the doors of prosperity singing this song. Walk through the doors of influence singing this song. Walk through the doors of lifting singing this song. When men want to distract you by singing another song that makes you the God of the process, respectfully shut them and tell them I was mentored properly before the door opened. The song will always be about him. The lifting and the accolades and the applause will always be about him. I am satisfied that he has made me a beneficiary of these open doors because I give you a guarantee by the integrity of God. You put what you have heard today, you will sit down and watch as though holding a charm. Doors open that you cannot begin to explain. I'm not teaching you cunningly devised fables. By the privilege of God's grace and without any sense of sounding arrogant, I know what I am telling you. What I am teaching you are not calling it device fables. You use the door of relationships with God, with men, and with things. You have mastered the art of knocking. You will knock on doors and men will open it. Even if it is by 12 midnight, you will meet them and say, a friend has come, save me from shame. And they will say, you are a friend indeed. Here I come. With their blessings, many of you will have relationships give you houses you did not build. Many of you will have relationships sponsor your children till university. Many of you will have relationships as a currency give you lands you did not buy. It is true. You don't have to be a Christian to believe the logic and the intelligence of what I'm saying. It is not only a spiritual principle, it is a universal principle. Do not have money alone. Use part of that money to buy relationships. Write this finally and then we'll pray. Write this finally and then we'll pray. Please make sure you write it. Everyone, please write this. This is my final word concluding on this teaching. Are you ready? Your relationship with God 
gives you access to wisdom and favor. Please write it down. Your relationship with God gives you access to wisdom and favor. Your relationship with God gives you access to wisdom and favor. The second thing I want you to write, please. Wisdom and favor gives you access to men and systems. Your relationship with God will give you access to wisdom and favor. Wisdom and favor in your life as a twin combo will give you access to men and systems. Men, number three now, will give you access to resources and influence. I'm showing you how it works. I'm deconstructing the dynamics of open doors through relationships. That it starts from God. Your relationship with God will give you access to wisdom and favor. Wisdom and favor will give you access to men and systems. Men will now give you access to resources and influence. You see how it happens. God will give you true riches, wisdom and favor. You trade wisdom and favor and he gives you men, access to the hearts of men. With men in your life will come resources and influence. These are the two things you get from men. And then number four, you now use your resources and the influence to serve God, to bless men, and to live a successful life. That recycles the process again. You use your resources and your influence to serve God, comma, bless men, and to live a successful life. The cycle continues. Your relationship with God gives you access to wisdom and favor. Wisdom and favor gives you access to men and systems. Men will now give you access to resources and influence. When those resources come and the influence that comes through men, you now use it to serve God. You use it to bless men again. You use it to live a successful life. And part of living a successful life is to give you more room and accommodation to maintain and increase your relationship with God. In chemistry, we have, and biology and agriculture, we have all kinds of circles. Water circle, is that true? We have all kinds of things. This is a spiritual circle that I've described for you. If you plunge yourself into this circle, there is no depletion for your life. It is God, wisdom and favor, men and influence, resources. With those resources, you use them as tool to serve God. You use them as tools to bless men. Then you use them as tools to live a successful life. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you by God the art of knocking. This is how we knock doors in life. Show me a man that pays attention to this and I show you a man who has left his current level regardless your background. This is one of the mysteries whose results show instantly. There are mysteries that the results may take time, but I guarantee you this one can speak immediately in your life. Can we pray for two or three minutes? Rise up on your feet. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you, so you'll do what you do. We need a move. We need a move. We're only going to pray one prayer point. 
which will be a combination of everything I just summarized for you. Lord, my relationship with you and let wisdom and favor come from that relationship. And with wisdom and favor, I obtain grace, O oh God, to be able to win the heart of men, valuable relationships. And with valuable relationships, O oh God, let resources come. And with resources again, the wisdom to serve you, the wisdom to bless my world, to live a successful life. And then it gives me an opportunity to spend time knowing you and building my relationship again. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Everywhere, inside, outside, all of the overflow, open your mouth and begin to pray to Jesus. Doors of prosperity open through relationships. Doors of increase. Doors of ministry. Magnificent doors of the anointing. Just one minute, go ahead and pray. By this teaching tonight, God has shown some of us where we need to make adjustments in our lives. Opening destiny doors through relationships. It says, for everyone that knocketh, it shall be opened. You may not be the one to open it, but the other person behind will open the door for you. Pray that you will never have to confess like the man at Bethesda, I have no man. God will bring men to your life. God will empower you. Relationships that speak for you at the gates. Obtain grace, obtain grace. Now that ye know these things, happy are you if you do them. Father, I obtain grace to invest in my relationship with you. I obtain grace to invest in my relationship with men. I obtain grace to carefully and spiritually relate to and with things in a way that it never takes your place in my life. For in Jesus mighty name we pray for in Jesus mighty name we pray I'm going to make an altar call right now very quickly please even if it's just to honor Jesus let me plead that we minimize movement it will not take more than two three minutes and we're out of here you are here tonight and whilst you heard me speak, the first dimension of relationship, you know you are found wanting there. In the order of priority, relating with men will not matter much if your relationship with Jesus is found wanting. And then inevitably you will relate wrongly with things in a way that destroys you. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, in this season of love and relationship, I do not want to go back the way I came. I want to make it right with the Lord Jesus. Perhaps you are here, you are saying, I really want to rededicate my life. I've been around church, but I really did not know what I was doing. But now I have heard your word and I want to make it right. Can I tell you, with every sense of love and passion in my heart and our hearts as a family of faith across the globe and in this place, I want you to give me the honor to invite you to come and stand here. I'm going to count one to five, wherever you are. The lover of your soul, the shepherd of your destiny, one who loves you regardless and in spite of, is giving you room to make it right. You can choose to reject him, but he's calling you. Come, I begin my counting now. One, come. Don't be ashamed, don't be afraid. Pick your Bibles, your bags, everything you came to church with and come. Come. God bless you. Koinonia, let's, let's celebrate them. Come to Jesus. Nothing to be ashamed of at all. Keep clapping. Let's encourage them as they come. 
those who are connecting from across the globe Jesus is calling you he's giving you a new beginning come hallelujah please come we're wrapping up already and we're standing here it's only because you may my brothers and my sisters listen let me tell you when we come to Jesus sincerely just as we are he receives us we receive of his life and that begins a new journey some of you are rededicating your life to Jesus some of you are making this decision for the first time there is absolutely nothing to be ashamed and afraid of I don't know what your life may have been but I want you to know that he's able to give you a new beginning and for someone who is following online watching by way of television as I lead them to pray I want you to join them right where you are experience the love of Jesus genuinely and sincerely thank you very much for making this noble decision may I request that you raise your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender and please say this from the depth of your heart say Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I declare that I love you with all my heart I believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior as my Lord and as my King I receive the life of God I receive the abundance of grace even the gift of righteousness and I declare that from tonight I go forward ever and backward never the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life I receive grace to live a victorious Christian life amen please keep your dear hands lifted father thank you for these precious people they have come Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.